and the experimental techniques. The next high vacuum pump is cryogenic pump. It is a clean vacuum pump which can produce very high vacuum down to 10 raised to minus 10 torr. The cryo pump is any mechanism that captures gases on a cold surface. Example, the froze build up in an ice cube tray. Cryo pumping is capturing and freezing out gas molecules. The cryo systems are mainly classified as open and closed. The example for an open system is liquid nitrogen trap and the closed system is household refrigerator. Vacuum is created by removing gas from a closed chamber molecule by molecule. The alternate methods to create vacuum is equal to push molecules through the pump. The cryo pumps freeze gas into solids. This reduces vapor pressure and creates high vacuum. A cryo pump uses a closed cycle helium gas refrigeration system to cool the surfaces about 15K to 80K. These surfaces are known as cryogenic surfaces. The thermal molecular motion brings the gas molecules into these surfaces are condensed or adsorbed. Under the equilibrium conditions, the total pressure existing in the region of the cryo surface will be the sum of vapor pressures by the component gases. If the pressure is higher than the vapor pressure corresponding to the temperature, then the gas will condense on the surface. When the gas molecule striking on the surface lowers some kinetic energy and remains adsorbed on the surface. High vacuum pumps with the combined action of condensation and adsorption of gases, the vapors onto the solid surfaces at low temperatures are called cryogenic pumps. It has been used from 1930 onwards. The liquid nitrogen and liquid helium are used as liquid cryogens and developed in 1960 as mechanical closed loop refrigerators for high and ultra high vacuum applications utilized he helium as working fluid. It can produce lowest temperature of 12K. At this temperature, the all gases except neon, hydrogen and helium could be pumped out these three gases are subsequently pumped by cryosorption. In many cases, the liquid nitrogen and liquid helium are used for cooling. At 77 Kelvin, liquid nitrogen is used as a coolant. The cryo pumps are effective at 30K with the vapor pressure of nitrogen as 3 into 10 is to minus 3 torr. At 15K, vapor pressure is very all the gas molecules striking on the cold surface could be trapped by the condensation until the pressure is reduced to vapor pressure as the gas at the temperature of gas. The cryo pumping cannot be used to pump gases as helium and nitrogen. It can operate over a wide range of pressures typically from about 5 into 10 raised to minus 3 tau to 10 raised to minus 11 tau. Provide clean, high-speed pumping of all gases. No fluids are used in these pumps. Cryo pumps operate under the molecular flow. It acts as high speed especially for pumping out water vapor as it can be condensed and pumped out at relatively high temperatures. The regeneration or periodic removal of accumulated gases is required for cryo pumps. To achieve Optimum pump performances, correct regeneration is essential. The regeneration is now performed by automatic controllers. The cryo pumps are used as four pumps if clean rough pumping is required. A canister of sorbent material is cooled with liquid nitrogen. Here there are two variations of cryo pumps are shown below. In the first figure, we can see the liquid helium is placed there and liquid nitrogen cooled radiation shields and the gas loads are coming and also there are chevron valves, baffles. So, the helium at 15 Kelvin to vapor or sputter ion pump is passing. 
remote compressor supplies room temperature helium helium gas onto the cold surface the cryo surface is completely surrounded by the liquid nitrogen cooled radiation sheet to minimize the radiation load the gas inlet area is covered by a blackened chevron assembly at liquid nitrogen temperature the chevron baffle pre cools the incoming gas to 77k it provides very high pumping speed for water vapor the inner cryo surface s is to be cooled to 15k and it condenses the majority of the remaining gases all condensable gases are reduced to a solid with a vapor pressure below 10 to minus 12 torr non condensable gases helium hydrogen and neon are adsorbed simultaneously by a bed of charcoal granules cooled to 15k before refrigeration the cryo pump must be roughed down with a trapped oil sealed mechanical pump if the hydrocarbons cannot be tolerated it is better to use oil free sorption pumps to roughing heat load on cryo surface determines the refrigerative power required this arises from three main sources that is radiation thermal conduction of residual gases the condensation load of pumped gases the contribution due to thermal conduction is so small heat load due to condensation is directly proportional to the throughput and the values about 0.49 watts per torr liter per second wr is representing the radiation heat load which depends on the area and the emissivity of cryo surface S is representing the maximum pumping speed per watt of refrigeration. That is 1 minus W R is equal to 0.49 S into P. That is S is equal to 1 minus W R divided by 0.49 into P. This figure represents the variation of pumping speed of a cryo pump as a function of pressure, where the speed decreases with respect to the pressure increases. advantages of a cryogenic pump cleanliness in that the contamination is only from the gases pumped high speed and throughput ability to handle high impulsive gas loads ability to handle high impulsive gas loads freedom from messy accidents and the operating economy and the choice of orientation and the disadvantages of the pump high capital cost low capacity for hydrogen and helium it requires regeneration and periodic maintenance thank you here we completed the high vacuum pumps and one more thing is remaining that is the iron pumps we can go through that topic in the next class hope you all okay with the class and read the class again again in your textbook and also uh, write the notes and submit